and things on their own. On their own here meaning uh, after they, they heard the hadith, after they memorized the Quran, after they digested the life of Rasulullah then when they say something, then you listen. We listen. Those who came afterwards, who eventually were disconnected with the Sahaba, meaning, let us say, the fourth generation. They were, they were, another word, a time came where those who were born in Islam, they did not connect with any of the companions of Rasulullah Now, there is something that is missing in their life. Okay? The direct contact with the companions and that, 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 that knowledge that they can get from, from them and so forth. So whatever it is that they say now, we have to relate it back to the companions, relate it back to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, relate it back to the Hadith and the Quran. So you go to the first three generations and you see this wealth of knowledge, wealth of wisdom that we could uh, 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 learn from and, and, and be advised with. Uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu outside of Mecca. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, one of the great companions of Rasulullah sallallahu As Rasulullah sallallahu traveling uh, or leaving Mecca and, and, and with, with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, not for hijrah, just being outside of Mecca. And here is this young man who is uh, taking care of a sheep for someone. And Rasulullah sallallahu said, do you have a milk, a sheep that, that we can get milk from? He said, I am a person who is trusted, trusted with this sheep, so I will not give you milk that does not belong to, to me. It belongs to the owner of the sheep. I'm just trusted with it. So Rasulullah said, no, give me one that never, uh, never made it before, meaning never had milk before. Then he brought one, Rasulullah sallallahu Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu held it. Rasulullah sallallahu put his hand in the udder of the sheep and the udder of the sheep was filled with milk. Then uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu brought uh, some container or a rock, you would say a rock that has a dent, deep dent in it, where Rasulullah sallallahu milked the, 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 the sheep and you both drank and then Rasulullah sallallahu commanded the udder to go back to the way it was and it was. Now, then Rasulullah Sallam left. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu goes back to, the, to Mecca and goes to Rasulullah Sallam saying to him, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah, why don't you teach me from what you, what you have? Okay, teach me from what, from what you have. And he said, I took 70 or 80 uh, uh, surahs from the mouth of Rasulullah Sallam. No one competed with me in it. Period. And Rasulullah said to him, "Inna You are, uh, uh, you are a young man who is muallam, meaning you, you, you have Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you the gift of, of acquiring knowledge. You have a gift of acquiring knowledge. Now, Ibn Masud radiAllahu anhu tell us something. Okay, tell us something. So, yeah, about the future, because he saw the past, he saw the life of Rasulullah Sallam, and he could see what, what, what would happen if we change. So he said, "Kaifa uh, bikum? Okay, how are you going to be? Wa antu fi fitna, and aw bi fitna, aw ida masatkum fitna. When a, a, a fitna touches you." A fitna touches you. Fitna meaning a trials, tribulation, tests, things are changing and so forth. Okay. And then he described it. He said, Yarbu fiha the, the young one uh, will get, uh, will grow in it. fiha kabir And the old person will get very, very old in it. And it will become the way of life. What he was referring to is the bid'ah, the innovation. The innovations, and the word innovation, when you say it in English, it is a good word. And when you say it in Arabic, it is a good word as well. 
unless you refer it to religion, then it is not a good word. Because religion is complete. That it is complete. You bring innovation in it. You are claiming now that it needs improvement. And now you're saying that Rasulullah either forgot to give us something that he should have given, or got something and held it back and did not give us, or he forgot something. And all of these options are totally unacceptable. So therefore, the bid'ah, innovation, innovation in deen, in religion is unacceptable, period. So he was saying, what, what, how are you going to be when, when changes that we will, you will bring, a fitna will come to you in the way of changes, that it will take a long time, a long time to be established. So the one who's very young grows in it, meaning that young children will be getting it and, and living in it and growing in it, it becomes a habit. And the older one becomes very old in it. Okay? What to take the sunnah? It becomes a way of life, a sunnah of life. Okay, فَمَنْ غَيَّرَ أُنْكِرَ عَلَيْهِ Then the one who comes and tries to change it, everybody complain about him, and now he is the one who is wrong. Now he is the one who is wrong. Now, when we talk like this, we talk about a symptom. Right? We're talking about a symptom. And which is, we are living in it. These symptoms, are we are living in it. <coughs> Things that happened in generations and generations, now you say this is wrong. Now you become the one who is making fun of. You become the one who is strange. You become the one who is different. And you become the one who is outcast and so forth. This is a disease that, that we are living in. So, how does the bid'ah uh, 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 is propagated and grows? By two components. One, is when time lapses on it. Two, nobody says something about it. Something new is introduced in our deen, and, and, and strange, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu did not bring, and you sit there watching, don't say anything about it. And then time lapses and time passes by. Now those who look at it, look at it one time, a hundred times, thousand times, it becomes a way of life. Now you get someone, that is how diseases start. So, when he said that, they said, they asked him, Ibn Mas'ud, when is that? When? When will this happen? Another word, what is the disease? Right? He talked about the symptoms. And talking about the symptoms, we all talk about it. We're very good at complaining. You see what's happening there? You see what's happening here? Don't you see what the Muslims are doing? And this and that, we talk about this a lot. Fine. You have a runny nose. You can you complain about you have a runny nose forever. But it's not going to do anything. But ask yourself, why do you have a runny nose? Okay? And once you know where did this come from, then you deal with it. You'll be able to deal with it. But you will stay all day long, complain about runny nose, nothing will happen. And if you, like, like someone, go into the doctor and then say, you know, my finger is broken. <coughs> right? And, and, and the doctor fixes his finger back and so forth, and then six months later he comes back, it's broken again. He fixes it for him, and every three or four months he comes the same problem. And the doctor never bothered and asked, him, what are you doing? How did you break it? So finally when he asked, how did you break it? He said, I was, I was hitting a nail and I missed the nail. He said, that's the first time. And when was that, what happened the second time? I was hitting the nail and I missed the nail. Then the doctor said, you need glasses. Now the problem solved. He goes, put the glasses on and his finger is well. That's it, the matter is done. So we can stand and complain about the hal and the condition of our ummah. We can complain, but what is the disease? Here is Ibn Mas'ud who gives the disease. So they ask him, when these bid'ah are there, when these fitan are there, and all of this, when will that happen? See, the question also is very, very wise. When will that happen? He said, and he gives the, the, the disease. He said, 
إذا قلت أمناؤكم أو قل أمناؤكم when the trustworthy one will be small in number وكثر وكثر أمراؤكم when those in leadership they will be plenty right so in other words when you when you uh, you you are plenty meaning in numbers but if you want to say I, I, I who is trustworthy among us you can can hardly find any but then when you ask who wants to be a leader everybody puts their hand up okay so, so why it's because the understanding of taking the amana is gone of, of taking the trust and carrying the trust is gone the 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 great matter of being trusted with something that is valuable in the matter of the ummah the matter of the people the matter of the community the matter of this and that the matter of the deen it the knowledge is so low that you don't quite understand what it is you run for it the comp the companions always ran from it the companion always ran from it not run to it because they knew how great this is when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was saying something about the mark of that day of judgment saying that <coughs> when the day of judgment the day of judgment will not be here until hatta dhiya until dhiyat al aman that the the, the 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 amana is is lost the, the the trust is lost and they said how how could could that be a rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when a matter idha usida al amr li ghayri ahlihi fantazir al sa'a how the amana is lost the trust is lost is forsaken is when the matter is given to those who do not do not know how to carry it another word when you hire someone for a matter that they have no idea about when you elect people who do not know what to do in the matter of islam that is upon upon places and, and places of worship when you when you trust what someone with the deen and he does not even know what the deen is what religion is when that happens wait for the hour so the first disease was that the trustworthy one will be a small in number but those who are asking for leadership there are plenty in number and then he said okay that you your faqih you're the one who understand the religion <coughs> the fuqaha, the knowledgeable people will be small in number okay but those who recite the Quran are going to be plenty in number. See? Another word, when the deen becomes just recitation of the Quran, not understanding of the Quran, not application of the Quran. Because understanding and application is the, the, the one who understand and, and, and exert an effort to know and learn and implement. So he's saying those who are exerting an effort to know the Quran, to know the Sunnah, and try to, improve, to learn it, and implement it among themselves, and teach it to others, they will be very small in number. And then, those who are reciting the Quran will be greater in number. And, and this is what, what the condition that the whole Ummah is in. The ulama of the Ummah are very small in number now. And, 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 and those who are small in number, they are suffocated as well. You do not hear much about them. And, and, and so forth. But those who, who, who are reciting the Quran, the reciters, they are plentiful. And the competition are plentiful. I'm not putting down reciting the Quran, learning the Quran, have the Quran, memorizing the Quran. Of course, that is not the, 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 the point. The point is, we're taking one dimension of the Quran and not taking the other dimension. Okay? <coughs> the companions, they used to uh, very slow, many of them, very slow in memorization because they wanted to memorize, learn, implement before they go on and memorize more. They took the Quran in its totality in a way of 
The Quran is a qira'ah, Quran. Quran is that which is recited. Kitab, that which is written. Furqan, that which is with it. You use rules to separate between haqq and batil, falsehood and, 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 and truth, uh, injustice and justice. So the, the, the Quran itself has those names. It has, it is called Quran, meaning from the word Quran, from recitation. It's called Kitab, Kitabullah, the book of Allah, meaning it is written in a way, form of book. And it's also called the Furqan. Furqan is something that you use to work with, to implement things with it, as laws and rules and regulations and so forth. So now, he said that when the time comes, you take it as Quran in a way of Quran, and that's alone, then wait for this bid'ah and this fitan will come. And then he continued. He said, and when uh, the dunya or the akhirah is used to gain the dunya. When the akhirah is used to gain the dunya. When the hereafter is used to gain this life. Another word, when one uh, does the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth, but actually what he's looking forward to is the gain in this life. When one read the Quran for the purpose of getting rich, when one becomes a faqih for other purposes, so he can gain some of, of, of status, something or another of this life. When Ali, Ali radiallahu anhu mentioned fitan, again the word fitan, tri tribulations and, 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 and tests and, and, and different things that are close to the end of time, Umar radiallahu anhu asked, he said, Ya Ali, when will that happen? Again, see, the, the, the fitan is the symptom. And, and again, Umar asked about the disease. When will that happen? Then he said, إِذَا تُفُقِّهَا لِغَيْرِ الدِّينِ When you, you seek knowledge, but not in the way of Allah, not for the purpose of religion, for other purposes. وَتُعُلِّمَا لِغَيْرِ الْعَمَلِ And you seek knowledge not to work with the knowledge that you know, that you, you gain. Right? When you, when, you, when you go in a path of knowledge for the purpose different than <coughs> working according to the knowledge that you learn. Which should be the first reason why you are gaining knowledge. Okay? And then, and they said the same thing at the end. That is then you seek in dunya, but not for the purpose of akhirah. You seek in seeking this life, but not for the purpose of the hereafter. You seek in this life for the purpose of this life. Ibn Masud says, even you use the hereafter to gain this life. We reflect on ourselves. And, 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 and we look around us. We're not just having bila in Islam and accepting it. We are accepting other things that are completely out of Islam and we're taking it and we're looking the other way. They are, I, I can stand here and start putting a list of complaints of what is that that's happening around us as Muslim in, in the environment among the Muslim and outside of, of the Muslim uh, 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 organization <coughs> and the Muslim community as well and how we are accepting things that happens not according to the Quran, not according to the Sunnah and according to Shaitan's way in many, many things, and we look in the other way, and we, we're moving on, and so forth. And we all know these lists. We all see it. Every time you hear the news, every time you open the newspaper, every time you, 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 you turn on your, your laptop, and so forth, and so on, you know, you know all of these things happen around. But what is it that we're doing about it? Start with ourselves. Start with ourselves. How are we dealing with the Book of Allah? How are we taking it? How we are implementing it? Okay. How are we closing the door on this fitting to come? 
har preventing the harm comes before bringing the benefits. If you try to bring benefits and then the harm is coming from all directions, what are you going to do? We have in a masjid here to prevent the harm. So we come away from other environments and come here, and, 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 you know, as, 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 as one, you know, criticizing separation in the massage. Well, someone, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you the, 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 the symptom and you tell me what it, you know, he's, why do you separate between women and women? We are outside mixing in this, this and that. And why would you do that, you know? It, it is hypocrisy. He calls it hypocrisy. Farman Rasulullah of Rasulullah Sallam is hypocrisy. Then I, I was going to add, answer, then one young man answered. One young man, subhanAllah, beautifully gave the answer. He said, a young man, I'm talking about, you know, 23, 24 years old. He said, isn't it enough to have fitan outside everywhere? We want to come out to the masjid too, and you want to give us fitan here too? That, that, that's it. With his fitra like this, with the environment <coughs> that he's in, he answered the question. But the, the answer also is, this is what Rasulullah taught us. If you have something better than what Rasulullah teaches us, then there is something wrong with you. There is something wrong with you. There is a disease that brings out uh, symptoms that can, can, can be contagious. Can be contagious. And, and once, once we, we, we stay away from the sunnah of Rasulullah it, it becomes a slippery slope. It becomes a slippery slope. There is some, you know, message that, that, you know, separate between women, men and women, and function, this and that. And you find, now I'm going to use a word, the culture of Islam grows, which is something good. Meaning, when you implement the sunnah, the sunnah becomes your culture. Meaning it becomes part of how you behave, and that is good. But money was not as much because people want to rent a place in the masjid and they want to take these dividers out, otherwise you'll go find some other place. So what happened, let's take the dividers away so we can make money. Is this what, what Rasulullah Sallallahu taught us? And who's who, who's going to provide? Allah. You're going to disobey Allah so you could get the provision of Allah? What is that? Okay, that is gold justifies the means. So what happened? The culture now of the Sunnah changes. You take that divide house and what happened? There's a function and say, we, we, we're fine. The women are there and the men are here, no problem at all and so forth. But, and then what happened? You find some young girls that used to come to the masjid with a hijab, now they're taking it off. They were not wearing hijab outside, but at least when they come to the masjid, they put it on. But now that the barrier is gone, that means you are slipping a little bit, so you slip that scarf a little bit too. Now you, you find a different culture now. Now, a year passes, two years, three years, four years, this is what Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu says, so it becomes a sunnah now. Now you come and say, wait a minute, this has to be done this way, this has to be done this way. Everybody's against you. Why? Because the bid'ah becomes a sunnah. Because the disobedience becomes obedience. Because the culture that is, has nothing to do with the sunnah of Rasulullah becomes a sunnah of the day. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين ورحمة الله العالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The deen, our deen, will prevail. This is the promise of Allah. This is the promise that Allah gave in the Quran 
and in the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that every house, whether it's made out of hide of animals or brick and mortar and stone, except Islam will enter it. By the dignity of a dignified one or by the humiliation of the humiliated one. Meaning the matter at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prevailed locally and then it went spread around and at before the end of time it will happen in a global way. Not even that but Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, that is when he comes down, what is the first thing that he's going to do as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi sallam told us? He will break the cross. Meaning, get this idea out of the mind of people and, and from the people's even vision. This is, here I am, and what you believe in, he, he come to the people that believe that he died and for the sin of people so he will that 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 mark of of of, of, of the uh, the sacrifice if you will or this and that and the trade it, he will take it and break it and he will follow the leader of the muslimin at the time meaning he will be uh, on the path of his brother sallallahu alaihi wasallam his brother muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell us with Isra and Mi'raj, give us a description of Isa alayhi salam. A physical description of Isa alayhi salam. What he looked like and, and so forth. And what he said to him and, and, and so forth. The point being is, you know, the prophets of Allah and the prophet of Allah will come back, Isa alayhi salam. He will be following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The point in this is, this will happen whether we obey or disobey. Whether we become in the, in, in those who are holding on to the purity of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah or letting go with it. If we hold on to it, we'll be among those who have Al Fawz Al Azim, the great success. It will, it will, if we let go with it, it will happen. But he, but we will be from among those who have al khusran al the, the loss that after it, there is no loss. Allahumma anta a'lamu bima fi qulubina faqfir lana dhunubana. Allahumma anta a'lamu bi hajatina minna faqdiha lana. Allahumma anta a'lamu bi sirrina wa ala niyatina fataqabbal ma'adratana. Allahumma aj'al lana imanan sadaqan fi qulubina hatta na'lama annahu la yusibuna illa ma katabtahu lana wa la nanalu illa ma katabtahu lana wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa qumu ila salati rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi